This message is brought to you by the Taxpayer Advocate Service. Your voice at the IRS. Hello, I'm Nina Olson, the National Taxpayer Advocate. I lead the Taxpayer Advocate Service, and we're bringing you a series of consumer tax tips to help you understand some important tax issues you may be facing. This series focuses on IRS audits, which are also called examinations. I know the word audit may sound intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Today I'm going to talk about how the IRS uses computers to look for income that hasn't been reported and what to do if you get a notice from the IRS as a result of this process, which is called the Automated Underreporter Program. Each year, your employer, banks, finance companies, and other third parties give you earnings statements on W-2 and 1099 forms. They also send this information to the IRS. The IRS compares the income reported on your return to the information received from your employer, banks, finance companies, and other third parties. At a minimum, the income you report on your income tax return should reflect the same information sent to the IRS. If it doesn't, the IRS will send you a notice called a CP2000. This notice explains what information appears to be left off your return, what steps you should take to resolve the matter, and what happens if you don't respond. When you receive this notice, the first thing you need to do is pull out a copy of your tax return, review it, and compare your return to the items the notice states you're missing. It's very important you respond as soon as possible, but no later than the deadline given in the letter. If you don't respond to the notice, the IRS will assume the income is yours and will take steps to increase the amount of tax reported on your return. So if you cannot meet the deadline, please call the contact number on the letter, discuss your situation, and ask for more time to submit your information. You should ask for the name and employee identification number of the IRS person you talk to and save it with your information. No matter how you respond, please include a copy of the notice. This will help the IRS match up your response with your case. If you agree that you made an error on your return, you should sign and return the notice. The IRS will correct your tax and send you a bill. There is no need for you to file a corrected return, although you may have to correct your state tax return. If you do not agree with the notice, do not sign it. Instead, use it as a starting point to show why the IRS is incorrect by attaching records or an explanation. If you mail your reply, do not send original documents. Instead, make copies and keep the originals for your own records. You can also fax your response to the IRS at the fax number on the notice. Again, if you choose to fax your documents, please fax the first page of your notice and include your name and social security number on each of the, your other faxed pages. This will help the IRS to keep all your pages together with your case. If you do not agree with the IRS's final decision, you have appeal rights, and I will cover those appeal rights in a later video. Comparing the notice to your return can be confusing, and sometimes it is hard to figure out the best way to respond. Many times the IRS can help you through the process if you just call the phone number on the first page of the notice. If that doesn't work and you are a low-income taxpayer or English is not your first language, you may want to discuss your case with a low-income taxpayer clinic. Low-income taxpayer clinics are independent organizations that represent low-income taxpayers before the IRS and help guide them through the examination process for free or for a small charge. Many low-income taxpayer clinics can also provide multilingual information about your rights and responsibilities as a taxpayer. IRS Publication 4134, Low-Income Taxpayer Clinic List, provides contact information for clinics in your area. You can also find it on the IRS website at www.irs.gov. You can also call the IRS toll-free at 1-800-829-1040 
or visit an IRS Taxpayer Assistance Center in your area where you can talk to someone face to face about your problem. These centers offer over the phone interpreter assistance in more than 170 languages. Telephone help is available using TTY TDD equipment by calling 1 800 829 4059. However, if you have a tax problem that is causing you financial difficulty or significant cost, or you have tried to resolve your issue through normal IRS channels without success, you can come to the Taxpayer Advocate Service. We're an independent organization within the IRS, so our people know the system and can help you navigate it. We will listen to your problem, help you understand what needs to be done to resolve it, and stay with you every step of the way until your problem is resolved. We have at least one local taxpayer advocate office in each state, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. You can call your local advocate whose number is in your phone book or call our toll-free case intake line at 1-877-ASK-TAS-1, A-S-K-T-A-S-1, or 1-877-275-8271. Remember, you have rights as a taxpayer that the IRS must abide by in its dealings with you. To learn more about your rights, you can visit our website at www.irs.gov advocate and click on Tax Toolkit. I hope this information helps. Thank you, and remember, the Taxpayer Advocate Service is your voice at the IRS.